Last Thursday on September 22nd, the backup catcher for the last place Oakland Athletics quietly announced his retirement after a respectable decade-long career in MLB. No, it's not Jeff Mathis. Check what channel you're on, guys, okay? Not too many guys can say that they played for 10 years at the highest level, let alone at one of the toughest positions in sports, so it's definitely something to be proud of. To add on, this guy managed to hit a go-ahead three-run triple the day he announced this, making for a pretty special moment. Now, why should we care, though? Plenty of guys come and go throughout the course of an average MLB season, and while retirement is a ceremony for some, there are too many players to count who make that decision every passing year. Well, this backup catcher is special to me, which is kind of a weird sentence. It's still real to me, damn it! And a lot of other people, too. And if you don't know the story of Steven Vogt, it's about time you learn it. His impact on the game we love, specifically for one fan base, goes beyond the numbers on his baseball reference page. Steven Vogt's story is incredibly unlikely likely, starting back in 2007 with an appropriate draft spot for someone who many didn't expect to succeed long term. Vogt was a buried gem, discovered with the first pick in the 12th round by the Tampa Bay Rays, just 10 picks after another diamond in the rough, 11th rounder Ryan Presley, who's still active today for the Houston Astros. Vogt hit well in his first two years in the minors, but broke out in 2010, batting 345 in over 100 games before winning the Rays Minor League Player of the Year award in 2011 with an outstanding season in AA and AAA, and by 2012, he finally got the call to play in his first handful of Major League games. The weight of the world certainly wasn't on the shoulders of Steven Vogt upon his promotion, but the Rays organization was reasonably excited for the catching talent they had on their hands. Vogt struck out in his first appearance on April 6th against the Yankees, then went 0 for 2 a couple days later, then a pinch hit ground out the next day, back-to-back -back hitless days in his first two starts in the next series, and then a few more unsuccessful pinch hits, and suddenly, Steven Vogt had begun his career 0 for 17 in his first 10 games, earning himself a demotion back to AAA. But the rosters expanded in September and he got the call back up, but in the last month of the season, Vogt still had no hits. Eight more hitless at-bats to be exact, and Vogt ended his first big league season with a big old goose egg. Kinda reminds me of somebody in a blitzball league. I don't know who that is though. But while Vogt struggled with the Rays, he became a beloved clubhouse figure for his lighthearted nature and positive energy, a theme that would run across his entire career. He won the team's rookie talent show, making everyone on the roster laugh with his uncanny impressions and unpredictable predictable comedy. Even Joe Madden couldn't help but gush after Vogt delivered a spot-on impression of his skipper. Not only is Vogt a gifted catcher, he can also play the trumpet pretty well. I can't think of where that'd be useful in baseball nowadays. Now, Vogt only did strike out twice in his first big league stint, but an 0 for 25 stat line was staggering to say the least. It was also enough to convince Tampa Bay that they should probably just give up on the project, placing Vogt on waivers that offseason despite his beloved nature in the clubhouse. Luckily enough, the team that scooped him up would be the team where he spent the best years of his career. Career. Early in the 2013 season, the Oakland Athletics purchased the contract of Vote, sending him across the country. The A's were just coming off some magic of their own. After completely tearing down their 2011 roster, Oakland was preparing themselves for an extensive rebuild, but they shocked everyone by taking the American League West with a roster largely consisting of unfamiliar faces. The pillars of that roster were guys like Joanna Cespedes and Josh Reddick, or surprise stud aces like Tommy Malone and Jared Parker, all backed by a consistent, efficient bullpen. Hey, wait, I know one of those guys. Those hurlers would all be sharing the battery with newly acquired Steven Vogt, still in search of hit number one in the big leagues. After still going hitless in his first seven at-bats in the Golden Green, Vogt finally arrived with Thunder, homering off Joe Kelly to snap a grueling 0 for 32 skid to begin his career. The A's won that game to improve to 13 games over 500 in mid-July, and Vogt wasn't a massive difference maker on the team, but he did collect 11 extra base hits and 16 RBI in his first extended stint in the bigs. The A's catching core was strong, with future all all-star Derek Norris getting the majority of the reps, and great hitting backstops in John Jaso and deadline acquisition Kurt Suzuki ahead of Vote on the depth chart. If not for a concussion injury to Jaso in July that ended his season, Vote likely would have been demoted way earlier, and certainly would not have made the playoff roster. But the A's loved their platoons and knew that the team was 27 and 13 with Vote playing. The biggest factor was Vote's numbers against their ALDS opponent, the Detroit Tigers, where he went 4 for 11 with a walk in four games in the regular season. Kurt Suzuki even batted three. 303 down the stretch in September, but ultimately he didn't make the cut. Vote was in, and not only was he in, he was starting in the playoffs. For a second year in a row, the A's were facing off against the Tigers, trying to get past the gauntlet of Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer. The Tigers took the first game with a three-run first inning off Bartolo Colon, and Justin Verlander fit the part in game two with seven shutout innings and 11 punchouts. But Sonny Gray outdid him, throwing eight shutout innings of his own. In the ninth, the A's managed to load the bases on a pair of walks in a single in a 0-0 game. Up steps Steven Vote. 
three strikeouts on the night already and 0 for 6 in the series, still in search for his first playoff hit. Needless to say, he found it. Vote lines it into left field, a base hit, Cespedes will score, and the Oakland A's walk off with game two of the ALDS. Vote single won the game and even the series at one win apiece, an absolutely vital game to win considering the A's had home field advantage and had already lost game one. They'd go on to take game three, with Vote chipping in a triple, walk, and a run, but ultimately fell in five games to Detroit for the second year in a row. It was a crushing end for Oakland, but also was a coming out party for Steven Vote, who caught all but two innings of that five game series. Many thought of him as a legitimate piece of the team going forward, but that still wasn't the case, surprisingly. With the return of John Jason next season, Steven Vote was cut from the active roster after spring training in 2014, and Bob Melvin called it one of the hardest cuts he had ever had to make in his career. Vote batted 357 in the preseason, but instead reported to AAA, where a strained oblique forced him out of the first month of play. It was a dramatic 180 from the high of that playoff walk-off hit, one that certainly could have derailed Vote's sudden ascent. But this is an underdog story, and that's not how underdog stories go. He'd get recalled soon after in June, though in more of a utility role this time around, bouncing around from catcher to first base to outfield. He played a lot of right field that season where the fans stood above him within yelling distance. Vote, always a charismatic clubhouse presence, had endeared himself to the Oakland faithful even through his up and down tenure. To show their affection for him, a chant was born, similar to the one made for the U.S. men's national soccer team that year. I believe in Stephen Vogt! I believe in Stephen Vogt! Soon enough, it was pretty common to hear I believe in Steven vote from the crowd whenever he took an at-bat or made a play in the field. The chant caught on like wildfire, with signs being brought to games by fans and merchandise even being sold at the Coliseum store. Vote was no longer a piece of the A's. He was the A's, a scrappy backup catcher turned playoff hero and surprise big league mainstay. In a way, he embodied the culture of the A's through and through, and he gradually became the most beloved player in the golden green. He saw more playing time in 2014 as as the A's bought big at the trade deadline and returned to the playoffs as a wildcard team. While Vote improved on the field, he remained the goofy, fun-loving everyman off the field that got him all the fan and teammate support in the first place. His NBA referee routine is a clip you might have seen by now, and it's genuinely hysterical. I got a double tech, I got a tech on Rosie for that pink shirt, and I got a tech on my boy 1-5. Watch your mouth when you're talking about Nick Punto. See this? See how we're rolling? On the baseball field, his increase in offensive production as well as his newfound versatility on the field was enough to convince the A's brass to trade away John Jaso and Derek Norris in the offseason, making Steven Vogt the starting catcher for the first time in his career. As the fans continued to embrace Vogt, he began to flourish more and more. The first half of 2015 is arguably the greatest stretch of his entire career, as he burst onto the spotlight as the best offensive catcher in the big leagues at the time. Through the All-Star break, Stephen Vogt led all American League catchers in RBI, batting average, on-base, slugging, and weighted runs created plus, and ranked 10th for all American League hitters in on-base and WRC plus specifically. Vogt made his first All-Star team alongside battery mate Sonny Gray, but as he took off, the A's crashed and burned. The departure of Josh Donaldson, Yoenis Cespedes, and Jed Lowry, as well as several of the pitching staff favorites suffering injuries were simply too much for the club to overcome come as they finish with a 68 and 94 record. Vote slowed down in the second half, battling various minor injuries and another 0 for 28 slump that creeped up on breaking the lowly record he had set at the beginning of his career. Still, he finished 2015 with strong offensive numbers and steadied the momentum into another productive year the following season. Vote once again made the all-star team in 2016 as the A's continued to flounder around him. He did regress a bit offensively, but he was still among the elite of catching talent in MLB at the time. For a revolving door of a roster in Oakland, Vote was a beat of stability and consistency playing in his fourth year as the backstop for the A's. And that's what made the 2017 season all the more shocking. Vogt received a contract worth over $2.5 million, and the organization acquired more catching help to ease Vogt's injury risk. But he regressed considerably on both sides of the ball that year, and near the end of June he was batting just 217 with an OPS plus 25% worse than league average. Despite being the second longest tenured athletic to that point, the A's parted ways with their clubhouse leader. This was a significant blow to the clubhouse culture of the A's, which had already taken blow after blow for years to that point. This looked like it could be the end for the fan favorite catcher. He did land in Milwaukee and hit about league average for that club,
club, earning a contract for 2018 before re-injuring his right shoulder, damaging his rotator cuff and labrum, and ending his season due to surgery. This should have been the end for Vote, a catcher who could no longer hit too well or throw runners out behind the plate. But this is not how great underdog stories end. I just told you guys that like a couple minutes ago. Vote held a workout in early 2019 for interested teams, and one of those teams who gave him a minor league flyer happened to be the San Francisco Giants. It was probably bittersweet to wear his Bay Area rivals uniform, but Vote capitalized on this opportunity, one that certainly could have been his last. He OPS'd near 900 in a month at AAA, encouraging the Giants to call him up in May, less than a year after his extensive shoulder surgery. And the 34-year-old catcher looked like he hadn't missed a step upon his return. He returned to offensive prowess, producing an OPS over 1,000 in July, while also lifting some of the catching responsibility off of Buster Posey's shoulders. Vote still had his legs under him too, at one point catching the entirety of a 15-inning marathon game between the Giants and Red Sox. After everything he had endured, Vote turned in an OPS plus 10% above league average and clubbed 34 extra base hits in a bounce back season out of nowhere. This parlayed Vote into a few more big league seasons in his career. He played for the Diamondbacks in the pandemic season and had a brief stint with the Braves in 2021. While he didn't make their postseason roster, he was able to check a World Series ring off his MLB bucket list. But there was still one thing left that Vote wanted to do, and that was return to the place that made him who he was. In the offseason heading into the 2022 year, Vote signed a one-year deal with the Oakland Athletics. This season was very similar to Vote's best years in the Golden Green. A roster in turmoil, in complete turnover, in desperate need of veteran leadership. It's been a dismal season for Oakland fans with their latest roster teardown depleting the roster of fan favorite talents. It's entirely possible that had ownership spent the money to retain the roster, the A's likely would have competed for a playoff spot once again this season. The future is dark for Oakland right now, a complete disservice to the loyal fans who made the team as charming as they were for two decades running. But if there were ever a bright spot on the team this year, it'd be the return of Steven Vogt. He's not the player he once was by any means, but for him, this return to Oakland is the storybook ending that a guy like this deserves. A full circle moment for a guy who worked tirelessly to keep his big league dream alive. Steven Vogt is much more than the numbers on a stat sheet. He's a genuine great human being. And while a lot of us want athletes to behave like robots and just produce and do their job, Steven Vogt is an outlier from that belief. He's an infectious personality and a refreshingly candid athlete, one that set the tone for other fun-loving baseball players of the years that followed. I don't know what the future holds for the A's, but what I do know about the future of Steven Vogt is that he's going to make an absolutely fantastic coach, and hopefully his next World Series ring will come as a beloved skipper. Anyways, that'll do it for this video on this random backup catcher, and now a word from today's sponsor, Geology. Geology is a 13-time award-winning skincare company recognized in Men's Health, Esquire, and Ask Men. Their skincare helps you fight acne, reduce oiliness, prevent wrinkles, combat darker puffiness under your eyes, have smoother, hydrated skin, and target signs of aging. You can click the link provided in my description below, take a 30-second diagnostic quiz, and with a few clicks, tell them about your skin and goals, and their team of dermatologists will design a regimen just for you that is shipped directly to your door. It's simple, effective, and it's a great routine to start and stick to. And it's easy to use even if you've never had a skincare routine. If you haven't had one before, you better get one started now. So visit the link in my description at G-E-O-L-O-G ie slash johnboy70 for 70% off your first purchase of a 30-day trial kit. That's 70% off. That's a lot of money, guys. You get award-winning, best-selling eye cream and a five-piece trial set valued at $50 for just $15. So once again, hit the link in my description for 70% off your first purchase on a 30-day trial kit. And thank you to Geology for sponsoring today's video. I will see you guys next time.